My name is Brad Cooper. I'm a senior hydrographic surveyor with Land Information New Zealand, or LINS. So LINS's role within New Zealand is New Zealand's hydrographic authority. So we have a mandate under the United Nations Safety of Life at Sea, or SOLAS, to provide that information to the public from a safety at life at sea standpoint, but also from an economical standpoint. So our primary users of this data are, of course, mariners who use the charts. The other thing we're finding a lot of councils and a lot of science institutions are finding that data useful. So the project we've got here today is a survey of Dusky, Bradshaw, Thompson and Doubtful Sound. It's a hydrographic survey just for charting purposes, but also for scientific purposes as well as a byproduct. OK, we got connection. We got connection. I'll be moving to the centre of the fjord now. Yeah, thank you. We're slowing down now to uh, 3.5 knots. OK, 3.5 knots. OK, thank you. So the history of surveying here in Fjordland goes back a long way. In fact, the furthest way could possibly go back to Captain Cook. Fast forward about 250 years, and we had the Navy come in here in 1990 and do a whole lot of survey work throughout, throughout 94, 95 and 96. And that's been the bulk of the survey in this area until now. So what we resurvey is, in the past, they use old technologies. So modern hydrographic survey systems use sonar. So that sonar puts out a fan of sound data. And from that, we can take the 3D measurement of the seabed. We also have the GPS position of the boat, and that allows us to position the soundings on the seabed. The other thing we can do with modern systems is we can integrate other sensors. So in this case here, we've got a marine laser scanner picking up the features above the waterline. It's really exciting, and this is what most hydrographic surveyors find rewarding, is the fact that you are mapping uncharted territory, you're, you're exploring the world. We found a few interesting things on the survey. In fact, we found a few rocks that presented danger to navigations, and those four rocks got put into the notice to mariners, so good that they were able to pick up those features and also get it out to the mariner. I guess what's special about this survey is it's in quite a remote location. The other different things, of course, are the use of the autonomous vessel that they're using. That is quite a new technology to the industry. The other thing that we're doing more and more these days, which is quite special, is we're taking water column data and the laser scanner data is integrated into our systems. So that's another thing that's exciting, is we're only just scratching the surface at what this data can do. You know, it can be used as a marine habitat baseline assessment, but it can also be used as a from a university to assess geological features in the seabed that they wouldn't have a chance of accessing unless they had a boat or a eco-sounder system.